What's up guys? Bus saying. I was kind of back and forth about recording this video because I know you guys have seen probably one or two many box openings. But I was like, you know what? It's content. So, wave three. War for Cybertron Siege 1. Booster box opening. Here we go. Oh yeah, I also wanted to record this to like... Um, just kind of like test out a new camera, but then I didn't because actually I think that camera is no better than my seven year old camera that I'm seven, eight years old camera I'm using for these videos. So, yay, Amazon 1080p camera, great stuff. Well, it this this records better in 720 so. If you guys are like, oh, Buzz, you need to do 1080 videos, really, just to show you some cards? Eh. The crisp imagery of of a Transformers card should be prevalent anyway, regardless of resolution. I have no idea what I'm talking about, guys. I'm going to try to make this relatively fast and painless. I'm not really going to go into the nitty-gritty of the cards, kind of highlight the rares, highlight the more important characters, so... <laughs> oh, won't need that. Got a few of them already. But this is... This is why many of us go to work for... <laughs> yes! Great, now I just need to carve some space here and get the trusty scissors to introduce themselves! Yay! Pack one. Numero uno. Where am I gonna dump all this waste? Well, probably onto the floor. And we've got an aimless and a spark stalker. To start with. Yeah, I know, blows your mind. Firecons are not bad though. But, like, if you want Firecons, you could just build Dinobots. They're probably better. They have more support, kind of thing. But if you like Firecons, build that. We have a Salvage the Battlefield for our first rare. Pack number two. These packs are great. Ooh. Okay, so we got Ravage here. I kind of like Ravage, but it's just so difficult to get that deck running properly. And we have an Elite 1 for our first uh, character. That is a rare card. And... This pack of battle cards is greeting me with a battlefield report, which admittedly uh, is one of my favorite secret actions. And then rare wise, we have a take cover. I don't, I'm not even sure if I have any take cover copies. Reveal if one or more of your characters would take non-attack damage during your opponent's turn. Instead, your characters can't take non-attack damage this turn. I mean, that's for, for Wave 3, that's fantastic, but you also have the Hollow Matter Projector Armor from Wave 5, um, which does give you an extra defense as well. Mind you, this is a secret action, so your opponent might not be expecting it. And also, it's kind of nice to get different iterations for the same subject, which is what we see here. Do you guys think we're going to hit a super rare? I don't know, but we do have a red heat there and a sergeant hound, which is a common, common. Oh, why am I bothering even trying to open these manually is an absolute failure usually. And we have a battering ram, which is, you know, it's, um, it's a decent little card. I wouldn't really mainboard it, but there are some side decks where a battering ram can absolutely shine. But then again, oh, 
not many because you know you can only play it on trucks to start with okay we got a road hugger i mean i love myself some sports car patrol so there you go and we have a major sound wave which i do think again just coming back to what i said about revage as well it's a really cool little deck and you can probably get a lot of attacks off but i'm also not a massive fan of well, like you know you, you really have to go sort of uh, pierce in that deck to make it worthwhile your efforts and some decks lean themselves better and we got another takeover and some other decks uh, don't lean uh, themselves very well for uh, pierce outputs now I think and I do believe there are uh, at least one very good deck profile on the Tinternet uh, YouTube of things uh, where the guys do detail a, a cracking sound wave deck, but I think that only goes up to pretty much wave four meta. Uh, we have a detour here again, sports car patrol, and we have a sergeant scrapnel. But yeah, sound wave is is a finicky deck. Is what I'm basically trying to say is that um, I believe I've built a better uh, Pierce output uh, deck with my five wide sports car patrol uh, quartermaster fantastic rare to get oh, we got a uh, my actually third HV electron breacher I'm actually quite and and force fields I I do like the four oh dude that urban camo I swear to God I was careful with opening it that's not me that is literally how it went into the um, the box like but yeah my uh so my five wide sports car patrol is a cracking little deck and uh i just keep i just keep winning with it all the time it's kind of like a strange little thing because usually i tend to lose the first game with it but then i i once i figure out how my opponent plays i can really because you got like i can i can really find what to do with them because uh Obviously, there's there's a lot of avenues you can take with that deck, and uh, yes, the deck profile is up on the channel. Yes, you guys should go and check it out after you finish watching this video, all that usual stuff. And um, we have an emergency defense field here. What does this guy do? Armor, no uh, no pips, so it's got to be good. If the upgraded character defends and would take an even amount of attack damage instead, it takes no damage. When the upgraded character defends and takes no attack damage, then you scrap it. So, doesn't do anything when you take an odd amount. But, if you do take an even amount, then you take nothing. That's not bad. Um, but I wouldn't play it. i would just play a force field. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Because you got uh, many different variations. And I actually uh, completed the sideboard, finally. Uh, for that uh, sports car patrol deck as well, and we have Captain Iron High. I always wanted to build an Iron High deck. It's just that the Iron High cards they're not like super great. Um, yeah. So yeah, the side deck's ready, and um, there's there's a big surprise in the sideboard dampening field. By the way, is alright um, with the um, sideboard character. Uh, all I'm gonna say is it's not a car. So it kind of, um, you know, breaks that mold of five white cars. But I did notice that often, especially now that my playgroup's um, really savvy with their deck building, often I lose Nightbird on the first swing because it, it, to swing for 11 is not that difficult. Nightbird has zero defense uh, naturally. And uh, whilst I do have a good amount of blues in the deck, I don't have any of the double blues, for example. Pop a wheelie. Still trying to figure out what kind of deck Pop a wheelie would be particularly good in. Uh, well, obviously motorcycles, haha. <laughs> um, but like, um, flip each of your characters from bot mode to motorcycle mode. And uh, you get an extra attack this turn, but only a motorcycle can attack this way. Um, yeah, because like a straight-up motorcycle deck is not 
really feasible with um, the um, Waves 1 to 5 cards, so you know the original cards of the game, not the fan stuff, and probably fan stuff has done a lot for motorcycles. But um, I don't really have the patience to keep printing out all those fan made cards. I'd much rather just, you know, play with whatever uh, is available uh, as long as it's cheap. I luckily am finding boxes here and there for relatively cheap, but. The, the the price of the boxes is steadily going up, and I mean the the the, the game's been there for like two and a half years now, so that's no surprise. Again, it's just uh, kind of like what I did with Dragon Ball CCG as well. Before the booster boxes absolutely skyrocketed and in price, it also pretty much disappeared. Like if you do see one nowadays, you're like really kind of lucky, I guess. I love the disruptor launcher, by the way. Um, yeah. We got a trailbreaker here. I, I actually don't think I have this trailbreaker. Um, why is normal? He has brave. Before the game begins, you may put a force field. That's pretty neat, actually. Um, but yeah, the like prices are skyrocketing, so getting these booster boxes is becoming more and more difficult, as you would imagine. Backup bag. I like that. Uh, to, to, to a weapon and armor to be scrapped from the upgraded character, then you scrap this card instead. Uh, if one of your cards will cause a weapon or armor to be scrapped from the upgraded character. <sighs> I mean, yeah, sure. Oh, fuel cash. I, I kind of needed one more of those. So we'll kind of put that with the rares. And uh, so, you know, I mean, you guys might be thinking, well, you know, waste of time, Buzz. Why are you recording these videos? Yeah, but then if you might, you know, if you come back in like five years time, ten years time, and there's like uh, a couple of uh, box opening videos for Transformers in the channel, then you might be like just, you know, appreciating that. And I kind of feel a bit of a Muppet for not recording when I got the um, Energon X, uh, Energon X, the Energon Edition, Special Ops Mission. Um, it's a pretty cool card, actually, just allowing you to play on two secret actions. Um, and I also wish I recorded at least one of the Wave 4 box openings that I got, because then I would have the whole lineup now, I guess, with this one. I do have a Wave 2, I do have a Wave 5, yes! And I fucking love that planes deck that I put together on the back of that. Fire Drive, we got Runabout. So yeah, it's a, it's a great planes deck. Um, really started off with just including a bunch of ships. Uh, Callus Leadership is another fantastic rare to get. Very happy with that. And then I kind of like just uh, scaled back on the plane specific stuff and when I did that I found that the deck is actually now functioning super great. No, n um, I mean I, I, I never did lose a best of three so far. Uh, Private Totes Red alerts. Yeah, but I do wish I recorded at least one of. I, I've I've recent well recently during the summer of 22, I've opened two boxes of Wave Four. Unfortunately, both of the boxes had the same uh, secret rare. Uh, not that I have a problem with Sound Blaster. I think it's a cracking card. Uh, Energy Pack is also a cracking card. I only had one up until this point. But having two of the same one is not great, so if you guys have any need for a Sergeant Sound Blaster, I'm willing to trade it for another Super Rare, particularly looking... I mean, I'm happy to, like, pay the uh, difference, uh, but I would love to get a Lord Megatron if you guys have one hanging around, or a Blitzwing from Set 2. Uh, either of those would be great. Uh, we got a Lionizer here, which is a fantastic if you need extra bold. Actually, we have a private RC, and I don't know if I had this private RC before. Well, whoever she has bold one's off one. That's pretty cool. Say, so, yeah, let me know if you need a Sergeant Sound. I think it's a Sergeant or a Major Sound Blaster. 
don't know. It's a, but it's a spaceship that does allow you to play unconventional flying object. Uh, so you know you can use it with something else besides uh, uh, one of the uh, what's the name of the guy? I always mix it up. Shockwave. I always mix it up with Soundwave. But Soundwave, of course, is very different. Uh, another battering ram. Okay. Well, a couple of cool little cards here so far. Uh, but again, it's just more like the funsies than anything else. Private Flak, Major Prowl. Sometimes it's just great to sit back on a Saturday afternoon and just crack some cardboard. Now, uh, Firecon Flame. Actually, I think this is my third one, so maybe I should look at building a Firecon deck. Uh, Firecon's deck. This gives all of your Firecons bold one, and it's a utility. And obviously, if you like run a, at least a three-wide Firecon deck, then you got all three of these utilities in play without doing anything else. Each of your fire cons has bold one. Um, is that better than the Dinobots? Again, as I said, it's a very different approach to a very similar thematic, as in like... I don't know, I mean, fire cons are fire cons, they're not Dinobots, but uh, both Dinobots and fire cons to me are just dinosaur-looking transformers. Uh, what we got here? We got a blowpipe. It's just kind of fell out here and and we have a sword uh, specialist flame war even specialist flame. I need to pull these up a little bit more I am sorry if you guys didn't quite catch some of those previous cards um, I guess this video is also kind of nice due to its length and we're not really talking about any strategies uh, such a good card Really, 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 really want to build a deck around it. Um, but, you know, I, I normally find space for it in a side deck, but I'm sure there is a deck where this is a three of main deck. And maybe one day I'll find it, find what the special secret recipe is. Anyway, so what I was saying is that the, at least this video is like a good opportunity for me to kind of like just talk to you guys, give you some of my thoughts on um, just generally the cards, generally different deck profiles and other uh, Firecom that I uh, posted in the past couple of months. I know I'm not really showing my face too much anymore, not that anybody really seems to care about that, so that's a good thing really trying to shorten the videos i am struggling with it because i just have a lot to say about my decks but ah, oh, there you go there's a unconventional flying object cracking little car for spaceships again the spaceships is one of those archetypes that i i i wish uh there was a little bit more support for not that not that they need a whole bunch of support but then also you got most of the spaceship i think pretty much all the spaceships are at least rare and then, of course, quite a few of them are super rare. So we got a top shot and the prowl. Now, if I did miss a rare character, probably did, then uh, you can point it out in the comment section below. And our ooh, erratic grenade. Uh, I needed a third one on this. I actually want to build a triptych on deck. Maybe I should do that this afternoon. That would be actually quite a lot of fun. So that's cool about Tripticon is that it uses so many different cards than some of the other decks do is that I can fairly easily just build a deck of it and then just have it like, you know, um, sort of on the side. Don't really need to... Hopefully I don't really need to take... Uh, oh, neat. There he is, the big man. Now, uh, this is actually my second copy, so... Uh, um, yeah, hit me up if you want to buy it or trade. I do live in the UK though, so bear that in mind, especially postage wise. I ain't gonna uh, be covering your postage if you want to um, get something from outside of the UK. Infiltrate, fantastic car. Oh, there's another fuel cache here. 
getting all those. I, I really like the artwork of this force field and not so much the wave one. So that's another one of the reasons why I got this box because I want more of this kind of force field and um, sparring gears as well. I need another play set of sparring gears. And I did already see one. Uh, but I didn't really pay too much attention as I was going through some of the other cards. So, you know, if uh, uh, if I don't get the, the playset, then, well, that, that, that sucks. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm giving it a good shot. Private Red Heat. And Trigger, Trigger Happy is another card that just really needs a good deck built around it. It's a plane. There's a bunch of, obviously, a bunch of support for planes. But the fact that... When you flip it to the airplane mode, it returns a weapon from your scrap pile to your hand, and it's got Pierce 4 on this side, which is ridiculously good. And of course, you got the ranged goodness, which is, well, um, marksmanship, armed hovercraft, etc. So, yeah, trigger happy. Uh, yeah, really cool. It's just it doesn't fit my because I, I wanted a deck that's just like really like planes doing plane stuff, uh, but that Pierce another Firecon flame. There you go. Maybe that's a sign. I should build a Firecon deck. <laughs> I I don't know. That's the thing. I'm not like a massive fan of just like building a a an orange deck. Just building like a flat out bold deck. Obviously nowadays you do need some Pierce in that deck as well, but I really prefer blue decks. I really prefer more like strategic decks rather than just like uh, yeah. I, I tend to say like pretty much anybody can build an orange deck, and and you know you can pretty pretty easily build it consistent as well, because every orange deck is gonna have pretty much the same cards: supercharge, grenade launcher, uh, yeah, you know, um, a piece through tyranny etc. So it just builds itself and then you just pick the transformer that maybe already has some bold in it or uh, does some shenanigans that is annoying but pretty much most of the orange decks will will do the same thing so I'm trying to avoid that. I'm always more into um, um, maybe you know looking at building like a Pierce deck with a lot of black pips or I've been toying with the idea of building a green deck for the um, uh, the micro, the planes MicroMasters. They go right here, the Airstrike Patrol. Uh, that that would be a little fun thing to try out. How can you maximize the power of a green deck? Uh, that would be interesting to see. And then we got a Wheeljack here. Another Battlefield report I see on top of this particular bag. Gosh, the amount of plastic though is. It is always surprising. Well, not really surprising, but kind of sad. The R Disruptor Blade. This is the first R Disruptor Blade I actually pulled from a booster, uh, especially a booster box. And I've paid like six pounds for my first or second blade or something like that. And it's just ridiculous how. Um, yeah, I think, you know, like, again, I think in this game you got like rares and then you got like higher like tier one tier two rares some rares that you will almost always find in 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 a booster box and then some rares like or disruptor blade that you're not gonna get in everyone uh mudslinger again uh trigger happy again and we are moving into a heat of battle all characters get both three and tough three both three tough three. This is particularly cracking if you want to get your opponent to sort of churn through their deck quicker. Works really well with um, uh, Lord Megatron from Sap4, for example. Not that I particularly. Not, not, it's not Heat of Battle that's giving me a reason to want that Lord uh, Megatron. It's just that I, I, a, I do like the card. B, I have some plans with it, but it doesn't involve Heat of Battle. Another Road Hugger. And we have a side swipe. I mean, no super rares. Not really a big surprise. We did get a rare, a third battering ram, but we did get a rare um, Optimus. I guess that battering ram works good with that rare Optimus that we pulled. 
Okay, moving on, we have a red heat, another runabout. We didn't get a run amok yet, I think we got two runabouts. An excess of running about, and we have a heroic team up. Uh, it's a star card as well. Tap one of your untapped Autobots, add its attack value total to one of your untapped Autobots until end of turn. And that can be pretty good, like just like take something out, and you're like, okay, well, actually, I'm amalgamating two smaller attacks into one big attack. Another Mudslinger, I don't know if that's like the third one. And a Sergeant Hound. And this pack has a force field on the top. And at the bottom it has Scavenge the Battlefield. Yeah, Scavenge the Battlefield is not bad. But the problem with Scavenge the Battlefield is that... Uh, well, m m Might as well you, you take... Uh, instead of scrapping that character's upgrades, you may put any number of them onto one of your characters instead. So in like an orange deck, that's usually going to be maybe uh, a utility. Um, and maybe uh, an armor, because again, most of the time, power punch, grenade launcher, they they get discarded after you swung with them. Another aimless, always good to have more than one. A private red alert. And small stars, a calculated strike. We are rapidly emptying the desk here. And uh, this one has another special ops mission. That's pretty cool. I don't know why I just decided to look at some of those cards now. I haven't been pretty much neglecting those the entire time. But yeah, we got uh, two boosters left besides this. Uh, you got through how uh, much is in here? 24? 36? I don't know, looking at my floor, surely feels like 36, but... Oh, shit me! We did get a... Oh, wow. We, we got a General Megatron. Well, I was not <laughs> expecting this in the final three. That is cracking. So it's 13 stars. Uh, 13 stars. When you flip to this mode, do damage to an enemy equal to the number of weapons you have on the battlefield. I immediately like that. Uh, that, cause that kind of leads into uh, you know weapons that stay again. So blue weapons predominantly might be uh, a better solution for tanks generally to go into orange decks. Um, um, but you could also like just operate with um, black big decks. Um, I can actually see General Megatron working a treat with Trigger Happy, bringing weapons back into your hand. You can almost always have weapons. And at the start of your turn, if this has three or more upgrades, do one damage to each enemy. And it's uh, ranged as well. And it's tank. Crack me. Oh, well, I've... Yeah, well, I mean, that is just, that's that's neat. I'm very happy with this. Very, 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 very. Thank you, Booster Box. A General Megatron. Okay, right, we also have a Laser Beak, by the way. And for the battle cards, another grenade. Nice. And that's the fourth, but... Um, it's never a problem, really. General Megatron. 13 stars is a lot, though. I mean, 13, and then if you want to run Trigger Happy, that's another 8 stars, so you're at 21. You you can't really do much else. Um, so maybe we're worthwhile looking at some smaller guys. Uh, Raider Whisper, and we have a Sergeant Chromia. Maybe this Megatron would work really well with uh, Sound Blaster. Sound Blaster brings uh, black weapons back. Another Quartermaster. Neat. Um, but then you have to run a two wide deck and two wide decks. This is the uh, this is the ultimate one. Slap it for good luck and see what's in there. But then you have to run a two wide. Now that 
15 health is okay, I think. Um, we'll, have, we'll actually have a look at Sound Blaster in a second. Just like, ah, oh, there it is, our, our run amok. There you go. So we have the pair and we have a stakeout. And. And our final rare is a backup bag, so it's maybe pointless to slap it for good luck, but it is what it is. Anyway, so what I'm saying is um, two things, twofold. A, uh, I don't, yeah, back, tell me about backup bag because I can't really figure it out. But B, and this is the more important part is that I need to get up and get Sound Blaster and we'll have a look at these two together. So what do I think of the box? Well obviously the Megatron cherry on the top. What can we do with these two these two scoundrels? So first of all Exacto Mundo, 25 stars, so there's literally no space for anything else. We have one spaceship, one tank. Again, not much synergy there. We have a specialist and a ranged. Uh, they have 15 and 16 health, uh, respectively. And, of course, Sound Blaster when Sound Blaster attacks. You may play a black weapon from your scrap pile onto this. Now, the problem is that do damage to an enemy equal to the number of weapons you have on the battlefield. So unless you, like, uh, run uh, attack drones. So yeah, attack drones is obviously a, an immediate consideration because you can have three of these on a character. But also having more than just two characters obviously gives Megatron a better chance. But then you consistently get the, the two damage off on this side. And at the start of your turn, if you if this has three or more upgrades, do one damage to each enemy. So um, you're also going to need like sparring gear. You're going to need spare parts. Because obviously then that kind of stops your opponent from uh, like vaporizing much of your stuff. Uh, it could be a neat little combo. And also when you flip to this mode of Sound Blaster, to the uh, spaceship mode, you may move a weapon from this character to one of your other characters. If you do, that character gets plus one attack until the end of the turn. So that can give Megatron in the bot mode straight up eight attack. Um, uh, and then you know whatever, however much the wep uh, the weapon damage is. Let's say just let's calculate grenade grenade launcher because that's like probably one of the best weapons still. Uh, but if you go with like black weapons, then the RR disruptor is great. So that uh, seven, ten, eleven attack with the disruptor, or twelve attack with a grenade launcher. Um, it could be interesting uh, running these two together. Uh, they kind of feel like they probably could both run their own deck with some support around them. Um, and it's just something that you guys will have to stay tuned for. Because um, maybe if I you know, crack the code or something, then I'll uh, bring you guys a deck about it. But up until uh, next time, guys, thank you for joining in uh, and, uh, and uh, obviously spending some time with me cracking open this booster box of wave three if you haven't subscribed yet please do so leave a massive like leave a comment below we had some questions that maybe you know the answer to and up until next time but since i know peace